Uh, next question comes from uh, BBC. We have Naomi online. Uh, Naomi, please go ahead. Hello, can we hear Naomi from BBC? Can you unmute yourself, please? Hello. Sorry. Um, I would like to ask about these reports from Italy that uh, doctors there have suggested coronavirus is somehow losing potency. What do the panel make of that? So thank you for the question. I'll, I'll, I'll begin uh, and perhaps others would like to supplement. So um, what we are learning about this virus um, in terms of its transmissibility and in terms of its severity, this, these are the two major features we've been, we've been talking about since the beginning. Um, in terms of its transmissibility, the thing we measure is the reproduction number. How many cases, uh, ad secondary cases, can one case infect? Um, and that reproduction number naturally is above two, uh, which means it has an epidemic potential to take off if we allow it to. Um, what we've seen across a number of countries is that that remains true. Um, but there is the ability for this virus to cause what the DG mentioned today are these super spreading events, um, which take place in closed facilities or in, in situations where you have very close contact with people. And that we've seen across a number of countries, and I would argue in all countries. Um, the other thing we look at when we think of potency and we think of is the severity that this disease causes. And consistently, um, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the virus that causes COVID-19, causes a range of illness in people that it infects consistently across the globe, um, where the majority of people have a more mild infection, some have a moderate infection with, with pneumonia, and then about 20% of individuals will have a severe disease. That is consistent. So in terms of the transmissibility, um, that has not changed. In terms of the severity, that has not changed. But what I think is important and what these scientists may be talking about, because I haven't seen that particular report, is that there are measures that we can put in place to reduce transmission, to suppress transmission, and this includes finding, testing, isolating, caring for all cases, tracing and quarantining all contacts, ensuring that we have a mobilized and engaged public, ensuring that we have an all of society, all of government approach. These fundamentals that we've talked about from the beginning remain consistent, remain the plan. And we know that early treatment, early identification, early oxygen support when needed can save lives. And so these are the things that I think can reduce the potency, that can reduce the power of this virus. But if we let the virus go, it will transmit. If we let the virus go, it will infect people and it will cause severe illness in about 20% of people. So the important message is that there are things that we can do to suppress transmission and to save lives. Uh, and if I, could, I mean, just supplement, I think we, we've said this many times. All new observations uh, are, are very important and, 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 and should uh, stimulate uh, further inquiry. Um, new viruses in human populations can can do one of two things: they can evolve and become less pathogenic, or they, sometimes they can become even more pathogenic. Uh, the it, it is not in the interest of obviously of the virus to. Uh, to, to, to kill everybody that it infects because the virus can survive better if it can transmit from person to person. And we see this with many of the illnesses, <clears throat> the childhood illnesses we have. Um, but we need to be careful. This is still a killer virus. And uh, there are still thousands of people every day dying from this virus. So uh, we need to be exceptionally careful not to create a sense that all of a sudden the virus, by its own volition, has now uh, decided to be less pathogenic. That is not the case at all. We also need to respect the fact that many people have fought very hard at community level, health workers and others, to suppress this virus. Um, and it may be, and they, we have to look at this and look at the various hypotheses for what our colleagues in Italy are observing, but it may uh, in some ways have something to do with uh, the, the dose and length and intensity of exposure. Because we do know with other viruses and other diseases that the dose and length and intensity of exposure can affect the severity of an illness. In other words, the, 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 the absolute amount of virus you're exposed to can determine how severe ultimately your illness can be. And that has been proven with
with other diseases. We don't know that that's the case in, 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 uh, in the case of COVID-19, but it may not be that the virus itself is becoming less potent. It may be that we are, as a community and as a globe, successfully reducing the number, intensity and frequency of exposure to that virus, which on the face of it, uh, the virus then looks weaker. But it may be weaker because we're doing better, not because the virus itself is weakening. I hope the virus is weakening. We all hope that. But we cannot, at this point, take that chance. Uh, and we have to continue to do the things we're doing. But we will speak to our colleagues in Italy and in other places. It is always important to take any observation on this virus seriously, to inquire, to, to create a scientific dialogue, uh, and certainly not to uh, be negative about any hopeful message. But at the same time, we need to be realistic and be driven by facts. And just to add to that, there is a, a huge global collaboration of scientists that share the genomes um, of this virus from around the world. And currently, in this um, publicly available database called GISAID, we have over 32,000 whole genome sequences of this virus from all parts of the world. And scientists are regularly updating their knowledge on the mutations that are happening. And we expect mutations to occur um, because this is a virus and all RNA viruses, there is uh, constantly uh, some mutations happening. So scientists are tracking what these mutations mean. And so far, there's been no correlation with, uh, with either transmissibility or with potency or in fact with any mutations that are interfering with either diagnostic tests or with, um, with vaccines that are being developed um, targeted to the spike protein. So I think this kind of a, a global database that scientists from around the world can, can access, can collaborate on, is very, very important and useful for us to study the changes in the virus and then correlate it with some of these uh, clinical and epidemiological questions.